this video is going to cov cover part two of the 3.1 warm up and then um, beginning th section 3.2. So for the 3.1 warm-up number two, both parts A and B, we need the interest problem formulas. For the first one that's monthly, we use A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And for continuously, the second one, we use A equals P times E to the RT, or PERT. So the question says, determine the balance for $3,200 invested at 2% for 20 years, compounded, and A, monthly, B, continuously. So A, uh, sorry, 3,200 is my principal balance. That's my P. 2% is the rate, and we're going to convert that into decimal. Move your decimal two places, so 0 0.02. And then 20 years compounded, 20 is my T for time. For A being monthly, the other variable that we have to worry about is N, and N is the number of times per year. So if it's monthly, then N is 12. So A will equal P, which is 3,200, times 1 plus R, which is 0 0.02, over N, which is 12, raised to the power of N, which is 12, times T, which is 20. And then you can type that all into your calculator. When you type that into the calculator, it should look like this. 3200 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12. Close your parentheses and then raise it to the 12 times 20. Hit enter on that and you get your balance, which is $4,772. And it's 0.249, which becomes 25 cents. So again, because it's money, we round it to the cents or the second decimal place. All right, then B says continuously. So this is where the PERT formula comes into play. A will equal P, which was our principal balance, $3,200, times E to the rate, which is 0 0.02, times T, the number of years, which is 20. And then again, type that into the calculator. So that looks like that. 2200 times e to the 0 .2, 0 0.02 times 20, and from that you get $4,773.83, well, 839, so 84 cents. And just like we spoke about, continuously should always earn a more than what you earn either monthly or daily or annually. So you can see that that earns just slightly more because the rate is so low, but it does earn more. Okay, so 3.2 is called log functions or logarithmic functions. Logs are actually the inverses to exponential functions. So the definition of a logarithmic function with a base a would be for any value of x that's greater than 0 and any value of a that's greater than 0 without equaling 1 because, again, again, it would be a constant function y equals log base a of x if and only if x equals a to the seventh. So because we can convert from one ex from one expression to the other, one equation to the other, logs and exponential are interchangeable. How we get from log to exponential is we take the small number here, which is actually the base on this, because remember a is the base. It comes over and it picks up whatever's on the other side of the equal sign that becomes its exponent, so a would pick up the y, and then it drops off the log, leaving whatever is left, which is your x. If I want to go from exponential to log, this is the base of the exponent. So I enter in log, the base goes to the small part of the log, the y goes to the other side, and then what's on the side by itself gets to be attached to the log. So whether you're taking this and putting it into exponential or exponential and putting it into log, notice that none of the pairs ever stay together. So the a and the x get separated here, the a and the y separate here. They always switch sides. If you put an f of x in the place of the y, now this is called a log function. So f of x and y interchangeable. With the f of x, it's a function. With the y, it's an equation. So if I had log base m 
of n equals p. The m is going to come across and pick up the p. The p becomes the exponent, drops off, and leaves just the n by itself. And if I had 5 to the second equals 25, then I can convert that by making 5 as the base. So log base 5. These two split up. The 2 goes to the other side. The 25 stays on the side with the log. Okay, so log forms versus exponential form. This is how we're going from log form to exponential form. So we just flip flop back and forth. And just like in the last example, if it was an exponential form and I want to go to log form, 2 would be the base. So 2 base goes there. 8 comes on the side with the 2. The 3 bumps to the other side. And if I want to go from here to here, the 2 picks up the 3, making it its exponent, drops off, and leaves the 8 by itself. So in this first example, we are just writing the equation that is in log form into exponential form. So 2 comes over, picks up the 4, drops off, equals x. It doesn't say to solve them yet, so we're literally just rewriting them in the other form. bx equals log base 3 of 9. 3 comes over, picks up the x, drops off, leaving the 9. Example 2 is the other way around. Write each equation in its equivalent log form. So this is in exponential form, and we want to put it into log form. If you look at a, b is the base, so this is log base b. 16 comes across with the, with the b equals 4 goes on the other side. And for b, log 5 is the base, x comes over with the 5, 2 gets bumped to the other side. Now example 3 says evaluate the function at the indicated value of x without using a calculator. So if this was on a test or a quiz in which you were able to use the calculator, this would be on the portion in which you would not. So A says f of x equals log base 4 of x, and x is 64. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in 64 for the x. So f of x equals log base 4 of 64. Now as we get better than, with logs, we can actually do the mental math here, but until we get there, we're going to rewrite this so that it's in exponential form. So I'm going to change the f of x to y. y equals log base 4 of 64. I'm going to convert it into exponential notation. So 4 comes across, picks up the y, drops off leaving the 64. So now again you can either use mental math or you can simplify this using the one-to-one -one property. I can say what power would I have to raise 4 to to get to 64 and that is 3. So y is 3. Or I can break 64 down. This is 2 and 32. 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. So 2 to the 6 would equal, and 4 would be 2 to the second times that y, same x or same base, so I can set the exponents equal to each other, and y would be 3. Most of the time these can be done with mental math or you can use your factor tree. That's obviously easier, but as they get more complicated, you may need to break it apart the way we did the second way. So because this was a function to begin with, I would say f of x equals 3. b, f of x equals log base 36 of x, and x is 1 sixth. So now I get, I'm going to immediately substitute the y equals log base 36 of 1 sixth. So I'm going to put it in exponential, 36 to the y equals 1 over 6. To get from a whole number to a fraction, I have to use a negative exponent. So I can either say that 36y equals 6 to the negative 1, 
and then rewrite 36 as 6 squared, so 6 squared raised to the y would be 6 to the 2y equals 6 to the negative 1. So I get 2y equals negative 1 or y equals negative 1 half. Or when I'm looking here or even here, in order to get from 36 to 6, I know that's a square root. And a square root, so the square root of 36 is the same thing as 36 to the 1 half. So if I know that 36 to the 1 half is 6, and I need it to become 1 sixth, I know I can make it the negative 1 half. So 36 to the negative 1 half means square root of 36, which is 6, negative 1 over 6. Again, you can either start to be more comfortable with these and use the mental math process, or you can break it down and to use your one-to-one -one properties, whichever is the easiest for you. All right, now we're going to use the calculator. So not all logs can be solved by using one-to-one -one property. You sometimes use your calculator. On the calculator, your log button, which is directly above the LN button that we were using for section one, log, that log is the same thing as log base 10. So if you see log base 10, you can use the calculator. If you see log, it is the same thing. But this is not the same as log base two. So you have to make sure when you're using your calculator that you're using either log base 10 or log, those would be the same things. There's two different types of calculators, really. One that's like scientific and one that's graphing. Most of the scientific calculators, you have to first, so if my problem is log of 1,000, you have to first type in 1,000 and then hit log. For graphing calculators, you have to type log first, then 1,000, and then hit enter. Either way, your answer should be 3. So to figure out what type, if you've got the graphing calculator, follow the right side of the screen. You're going to hit log first. But if you're using a scientific calculator and you're not sure, if you hit the log button and you don't see the word log, then you know you have to follow the left side of the screen. If when you hit the log button on your calculator, the word log appears, then you know you follow the right side of your screen. So if I wanted to find log of five halves, I can simply type in log 5 divided by 2 if I'm using the graphing calculator or one that stores the word log. If I'm using scientific, I have to do 5 divided by 2 first and then hit log. And from that, you should get 0.39794. If my question says log 5 over log 2, on a scientific, I do 5 log divided by 2 log and then equals at the end. With a graphing calculator, I do log of 5 divided by log of 2, hit enter, and you get 2.32193. And then the last example on this page is log of negative 3. So if you are using a scientific calculator, you might most likely have to hit the 3, then hit the positive negative button so it makes it 3, then hit log. If you're using a graphing calculator, you do log, negative, not the minus sign, but the negative, 3, and enter. For either of those, you should actually get an error. And that's because if you think about it, if it's log... base 10 of negative 3, and you don't know what it is, let's say I set this equal to y, y to what power is going to give you a negative 3? If your base starts out positive, there is no number I can raise it to to make it become negative. So if you see something that says log of any base to a negative number, it's going to be no solution or error on your calculator because you can't get the result of a log to be negative. Okay, so let's work through an example. Example four says use a calculator to evaluate the function at the indicated value of x. This time it says f of x equals negative three log base 10 of x and x is 2.7. So f of x equals negative three log base 10 of 2.7.
and you can type that whole thing into your calculator, negative 3 log, which is the same thing as log base 10, 2.7, and I should get that f of x equals negative 1.29409, which I'm going to round to four decimal places. Actually, I'll round to three, keep what, what, what we did before, which is negative 1.294. Okay, so now we're going to go through some properties of logs that are going to make things a little bit easier. If you see log base A of 1, the question is what would I have to raise A to to get to 1? And remember the result of an exponential function being 1 means that it was raised to a 0. So any number, log base 5 of 1 would be 0. Log base 7 of 1 would be 0. Because the only way to get from... The base to zero or to one as my result is to raise it to zero. If you saw log base a of a, meaning both the base and the larger number the same, the result of this is going to be one, because again, if I'm asking what do I raise a to to get to itself, I know the exponent would have to be one. Gets a little bit more complicated with three. Now it's saying log base a of a to the x. So if I were to pull this out and try to simplify this, if I was saying log base a of a to the x, and I don't know what it is, so I'm going to set it equal to y, and I convert that into exponential notation, the a to the y is going to come over and pick up, or the a is going to come over and pick up the y, dropping off, leaving a to the x. And then my bases are the same, so whatever's left in my exponent is what my answer would be. So the simple way to look at this is when both the base and the large number are the same, then I cancel through them and I leave and I grab just the exponent. Now if you look at the second part of this, if you were given a log base a of x and I didn't know what it equals yet, I would say that this equals y and I would convert it into, x, into log um, notation by saying log base a of y equals log base a of x. And then the one-to-one -one property also works on logs. If the log base is the same, then what's next to it would be equal to each other. So if I had log base a of y equals log base a of x, the answer would just be x. So I can simplify that by saying if the base here on the exponential function is the same as the base on the log, then I can actually cancel through this and keep what's next to it. So if I had 3 log base 3 of 7, I can cancel through these and my answer is just 7. So this last one is just that one-to-one -one property. If log base a of x equals log base a of y, then x equals y. If you have both the log and the base the same on either side of the equal sign, then what is next to the log on each side is equal to each other. So if I had log base a of 3 equals log base a of x, then x would equal 3. All right, so example five says solve the equation for x. We've now got an equation with an equal sign. I'm going to convert this into exponential notation. So three comes over and picks up the x, drops off, leaving the 81. So again, mental math, three to what power equals 81? Some of us can do that in our heads. And then if not, because as the numbers get bigger, it's going to be harder. This is nine and nine, which is three, three, and three, three. That's four threes. So 3 to the x would equal 3 to the 4th, and the 1 to 1 property tells me x is equal to 4. And b, log base 5 of 1 equals x. Convert that into exponential notation. 5 to the x equals 1. What would I raise a base to to get it to become 1? And hopefully you remember this is 0. Example 6 says use the properties of logs to find the answers. So this is when how comfortable you are with logs is going to pay off how quickly you can do these questions. A says 3 raised to the log base 3 of 15. 
So we talked about this already. If the base on the exponential function is the same as the base in the log, you can actually cancel through these and just take your exponent, which would be 15. If you don't see that, then you can always introduce a variable like this equals y, convert this into log notation. So it would be log base three of y equals log base three of 15. And then because these are the same, the log and the base on either side is the same, you can use the one-to-one -one property to say that y would equal 15. Now we introduced the y, so the answer y equals 15 should just be 15. There was no variable, we added it in. B says log base two of two to the third. Again, if the base on the log and the exponential base is the same, I can actually cross through these and grab the exponent, so it'd be just three. If you don't see it, then set it equal to y. Now it's in log, so we're gonna convert it to exponential. Two comes over, picks up the y, drops off, equals two to the third. The base is the same, so I grab the exponent, which is y equals three, and again, we brought in the y, so the answer is just three. Part C says, log base nine of nine. So again, property of logs, if the base and the exponent, I mean the base on the log and the large number are the same, we can cancel them out and keep the exponent. That's really nine raised to the first power. So this is just one. You can also set it equal to y. Nine to the y equals nine. This is to the first power. So y would equal one, giving you back that one. D says log base three of one third. So again, we're going from a base that's a whole number to a fraction, which means it's gonna be a negative exponent. The actual value of the base didn't change, so this becomes negative one. You can also introduce the y and say three to what power equals one third. Three to the y would equal three to the negative one, and y would equal negative one. So the more comfortable you get with logs, the easier these questions are going to be, the quicker these questions are going to be. If you're finding yourself struggling with the properties at the beginning, just rewrite them using exponential notation, or if they're in exponential, rewrite them using log so that you can use the other properties. Okay, you can use the remaining time in class today to start the 3.2 assignment.